All right. I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board and Finance Committee. Uh, the time is 6.32 p.m. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes of our last meeting, January 8, 2024. I'm going to approve the minutes of January 8th. So, uh, second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Our first order of new business will be the budget presentation from South County Senior Center. Take it away. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Remillard. I'm the director of the South County Senior Center. Um, I want to first start off by um, discussing an item I handed out to everyone, um, the grant funds that we've received during this fiscal year 2024. Um, and some of them will be available through the calendar year 2024 as well. Um, we've received a total of $272,993.95. Um, the reason that I bring this up is when you look at our uh, Fund 290 budget for our operations, some of those numbers um, during the course of the fiscal year will be reduced and carried forward until fiscal year 2026 because some of the funds allocated from our grants are also available to pay for reimbursement for rent space, for salary, um, but unfortunately, I do not know the exact amounts of what those will be um, expended during that year. So I just want you to, um, to know that we've received this money. And uh, the flow chart will also describe what we're purchasing um, with the grant funds um, and I figure you could read that, you don't need to go over item for item. But the two largest ones, one was $100,000 for a digital literacy grant. We recently conducted an, um, a lottery to distribute iPads amongst residents for Sutherland, Deerfield, and Wheatley. Uh, we did not receive the full 129 um, applications as we had hoped. We received about 87, so we will be holding a second lottery to distribute the rest of those. Um, we can also provide a stipend for up to 52 individuals towards reimbursement for um, digital access, um, which is basically reimbursement for their internet connection. Uh, we will be holding a second lottery for that as well because we did not distribute all the funds, um, and that's a reimbursement grant for that. The other one is, and it also provides three MacBooks for us to use at the senior center, as well as iPads for people to use at the center. So we will have a question available for people to, to check out or use while they're at, this, at our space. The second grant uh, was a hybrid programming grant for $119,953.94. We'll be purchasing three OWLs. Uh, one will be given to Conway because we um, worked with them to partner um, to uh, give them access. They did not have uh, access to anyone writing a grant for them, so we included them with our grant application this time around. They will also get one laptop. Um, that particular grant also uh, has built in st salary for staff. So the money that we typically get for the formula uh, grant, formula fund grant, we will probably end up not having to utilize all of the monies allocated in there um, because we have around $12,000 allocated in the grant towards salary, so we'll probably be carrying that amount forward. That's not anything that each of the towns vote on. It is just um, grant monies that's provided through the state uh, based on the number of seniors located in each community. It increased this, uh, this year to $14 per senior, um, up from $12 per older adult, and our numbers for older adults from 60 up in all three towns increased so we're receiving for about 3,313 older adults within all three communities. Um, just to point out a couple things on our budget, you'll see the biggest increase is our salary. Um, our retirement funds from fiscal 24 to fiscal 25 increased about $12,000. That is because our outreach coordinator went up to full time, 35 hours a week. Um, and we're allocating retirement funds. Each of the previous, each of the fiscal years, as you are probably aware, pays for the previous fiscal years worked. So that's why there's an increase there because he went from part time to full time, and he did not receive benefits 
for a full fiscal year in 2023. Um, it went up from, you know, he started full time in uh, March of this year, of last year. Um, so from March to the end of June is what it was for that. The other increase is our administrative overhead. It went up approximately three, just under $3,000. The reason for that increase is the amount of grants that we received creates a lot more work for the town of Deerfield um, administrative staff. So we're pretty much going to be able to utilize some of the funds to offset our salary, which will then allow some monies to go towards our administrative calculations. Um, let's see here. You'll also see an increase um, for electricity, janitorial supplies. Um, we based this on actual numbers that we've had for the last fiscal year. So it went up about $1,500 for our janitorial cleaning. Um, the previous space wasn't being cleaned as often because we weren't utilizing it for the seniors when we were at the 67 North Main Street previous. Um, electricity rates, well, those are self-explanatory because everybody's rates are going up. Um, we're also at the space more frequently um, and we're using different electronics, so uh, guesstimating why they have increased so much. Uh, the next item that really went up was our vehicle repairs maintenance by $1,000. Uh, we had to get all new brakes and new tires on the van. The van was given to us by the Hatfield COA in 2020. Um, it really hadn't been utilized until November 22, so last year was really the first year we had an idea as to how much we'd be spending. Um, let's see here. The Carry forward funds, we're probably estimating around $18,000 being utilized moving forward. Um, sorry, I don't have the right budget sheet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's probably what it is at this point. Um, we were able to carry forward from last year versus what we had anticipated um, around. 26,000, sorry, I'm trying to get to the right page here. Around $26,273.89 for a special revenue fund, so instead of giving that money back to the general revenue, uh, we keep it and carry it forward. Um, I've been able to um, obtained different grants last year. We received a massive motion, which helped to pay for some of our program funding. So we're able to um, keep some of those expenses in, as well as um, you know, pretty much ch change some things out. Um, the biggest increase, as you're aware, is the uh, rent. Um, we ended up increasing that. Because you know, by $45 a month, um, we're paying for two spaces. I know the town of Sunderland is currently actively looking into purchasing 23 Palm Tree Road for us. Um, just so everyone knows, our current leases end at the end of April and May of this year. So after that, we currently don't have anywhere to go. RFP is being drafted um, with assistance and uh, so hopefully we'll know, you know, the money, a uh, dollar amount may change moving forward. Um, but hopefully where we are, you know, has expressed interest in bidding on those RFPs, but we don't know what will happen, obviously. Um, the other couple points that I just want to uh, share, just a couple of quick facts. Um, we have uh, increased membership this year for calendar year 2023. 47 new members are from Sunderland. Um, we have a current total of active members to 392. We have, um, let's see, in 2000 and, or 2022, 294 members attended at least one event. During 2023, 370 members attended. So we've gotten an increase there. Um, we're averaging, last year we had increased to 60 um, per person, or you know, per day, per month, um, an average number of individuals to 66 um, during 2023. That's an increase of about 10%, where the year before we had an increase of about 90, 
98%. Um, so, you know, we're doing pretty good. And during um, 22 and 23, it's increased by about 104% from what it had been before, um, which was around 26 people average per day. Um, and our highest day per um, attendance per month, or excuse me, during the month, our average was 77 people uh, participating in March. Our lowest attendance for individuals was 56% for May and June. So we haven't gone below 56. Um, where the previous year we had been, our lowest number was 26% or 26 individuals. Um, so we've been really good at sustaining our most popular our activities are our enhanced fitness class, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and our food pantry. Our food pantry, we had more than 186 households receive support from our monthly pop-up food truck. Um, and that, the year before, it was 185, so we're seeing it kind of stay status quo. Um, in our brown bag program, we average about 32 households that we provide support for. Um, we're still partnered with SNAP, um, and just two other things to note, we offered a Friendsgiving in November. We had about 74 individuals attend. It was a little down from the previous year, which was 106. Um, but our Christmas Day holiday meals went out to 86 families, um, which was around uh, 30, or excuse me, 63 from the year before to 86 this year. So it's a pretty good intake. Uh, we've also provided more than 313 rides on our van to 44 um, unduplicated individuals. So that means 44 people on our ride that were not duplicated. Um, you know, so you weren't re being repetitive with the number there. Um, and we still have our grant gift or our gift funds, which we utilize sometimes through donations that we receive. Um, we are trying to keep the usage of that around $5,000 every year, just so we don't go too far down and deplete that. Um, and the grant money has helped uh, tremendously. So I don't know if you have any questions, comments. So you do still plan on exploring what the, um, the lease agreement will look like for the two properties you're at now, right? Um, so, you mean once the, um, the April and May lease expire? So, my understanding right now is that um, Waitley is helping prepare the RFP to move forward for those. Um, I provided some data today regarding, uh, you know, what to include in those. Um, we're hoping to have a turnaround in March, but that has to go through Deerfield. I believe they have to sign as their fiduciary, um, and Waitley was trying to be supportive to provide, some, um, you know, the preparation and other things for RFP. Um, so, but at this point, um, we're hitting the procurement cap of the thirty-five thousand dollars for both spaces, um, and I believe, you know, that's what that's what the concern is. Once you hit that, you have to. Uh, put the RFP out, as I'm sure you're all familiar. Um, so after April and May, I do not know what we'll be doing. Okay. Um, we've, we've also, um, the Board of Oversight has met uh, once previously to discuss you know, what we're doing moving forward. We're gonna have another meeting in uh, February to discuss additional things, um, including the intermunicipal agreement uh, that creates the three town um, agreement for the South County Senior Center. Um, also, I've discussed with Conway the potential ability at some point after their annual town meeting, they are interested in potentially joining our IMA. Um, if that, you know, but that depends on their annual town meeting and what they're looking to do. Very good. What's the date for the RFP going on? We have a, <laughs> it's got to get through. Yeah. I don't have a date. Um, I believe from what I was looking at this morning from the draft, um, I think they're looking at having bids by the end of March if everything goes well, but I do not know um, what will happen. Um, you know, that's kind of above my head with 
who's working on that, but I am actively pushing for that because we need a space to be. Okay. Can I ask you a couple questions? Yes. Um, what's the plan with the current van? With the what? The current van, if you get a new van. Um, if we receive a new van, we're going to expect people that want to attend. Uh, for example, um, we went on a field trip to the Springfield Armory Museum. We rented a van from Enterprise. Um, or excuse me, we borrowed the we borrowed Frontier Regionals van, passenger van for that event. Then for another event for the Big E, we rented an Enterprise van um, to go. So we can't take more than 20 people, 20 passengers. If we want to, we have to rent a bus, which you know costs $400 each time. Um, the current uh, capital project request we kind of everyone um, is to come together to fund around $27,000 to uh, purchase the van. The state of the MassDOT program will pay for 20, uh, will pay for 80% of the vehicle and the in-kind match, or the cash match, excuse me, not in-kind, um, is 20%. Um, so we would be keeping the van that was donated yes. and adding this? Yes. Got it. Okay. So we'd have maintenance on two vehicles, tires, oil changes, everything else on two vehicles. Yep. One is six passenger and one a 14 With, passenger? Yes. Okay. The 14, so that would also give us three uh, wheelchair accessible seats. Currently, we only have one space for a wheelchair accessible um, person, and sometimes when we do go on trips, the buses do not accommodate um, wheelchairs, and also the Enterprise or the Frontier Regional vans don't offer uh, you know, additional accessible um, passenger options either. Um, and the, the vehicle we currently have is a 2011, which um, I just want to share if at some point we decide we want to pursue getting a, another vehicle, we can trade that one into the state um, and potentially you know, get money um, towards it. But I've also been discussing some uh, works partnership with the PBTA about potentially getting one of their vans. Um, you know, it may come off their roster, but I, I don't know what their uh, likelihood of that would be. But it's a conversation I'm having for different opportunities. So I know everybody's budget is tight. So I may have missed this, apologies. The program coordinator, is that being paid out of a grant? The program, for, uh, program coordinator is being paid out of the formula fund grant. Okay. I don't think, I, I don't remember if I sent that one over um, to you, but that one there is um, $20,906 is the salary for that, and that's being um, paid for out of the formula fund, um, and that's how it's been paid for since, uh, since I've been here. Um, and you recently hired somebody for that, right? Uh, yes, we did. We hired a new person who started Ju January 3rd, Tom Patria. He's been there for about three weeks now. Um, he's fitting in nicely. Great. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Hmm. Any other questions from the board? I'm okay. Finance Committee, Linda? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jennifer. All righty. Next up, we have budget presentation fire department. incidents but as far as the number of incidents or dispatches that we had uh, both for fires uh, and for EMS assists uh, the numbers were up um, 
2022, we had 156 dispatches, and in 2023, we had 181, so a 14% increase. And um, losses, again, for us, can vary year to year. Uh, if we have a sort of structure fire, it can be in hundreds of thousands of dollars, but this is an aggregate of, uh, for our fire responses, when something um, probably exceeding them in some ways, which is good, but that's all part of what everybody's been up to um, when there isn't something uh, of an emergency nature going on. And I put together um, the budget looking, budget request, looking at our expenses that we've been incurring and then the expenses that we've sort of got an eye on. Now, I didn't have any capital requests this year because I didn't have any prepared. Um, it doesn't mean we're not looking at things. A few things that are on the horizon, uh, public safety complex related, uh, trying to get an idea for what the cost would be to fully electrify that building in terms of HVAC. And um, we may need to reserve the oil boiler to heat the truck bay because it's a very large area. And sometimes we have to heat that up pretty quickly. But for the rest of the building, we're looking at seeing what it would be to essentially put in, as a lot of people call them mini splits, those sort of uh, variable displacement compressors and what have you, uh, to take care of heating and cooling. And probably going to have to put that out uh, to an RFP to, to figure it out, because it's somewhat complicated the way that um, the building is laid out. Uh, but the uh, work that was done for the controls, with the public safety complex seems to be working. Uh, Chief and I are having many fewer conversations than we used to <laughs> on uh, it either being too hot or too cold or not warm at all or not cold at all in the building. So that's working. Um, you know, one of the things that I discussed with Jeff and uh, a lot of other folks was the fact that that system in and of itself, a lot of the moving parts are 16 years old. Um, we can't uh, pretend that we've got a brand new system Leaps and bounds ahead of where we were, uh, but we so I can't rest on our laurels. I want to get an idea of what getting to that next uh, plateau would be. Now, I know there's mass save money for individuals and landlords in, this, in the Commonwealth for heat pumps. Did the municipalities be able to participate in that, or is that something that's... Um, we got rebates from Eversource to do the heat pumps here, so we got them for free. Um, as part of the mass saves, but I think this is a more involved system redesign that they want to do. So it's not like, hey, we just want air conditioning and heat in these rooms, I think. But we, yeah, we'll certainly okay. look at what types of energy incentives are yeah. available. Okay. And that's, and that's really certainly part exciting. of it. Uh, we want to figure out exactly what, what the best strategy would be, mm -hmm. what sort of equipment would be ideal and then figure out how we can stretch the dollars the most to make that happen and plan for it accordingly. Um, in addition, we've got a sort of a longer horizon, but those horizons come up very quickly. Uh, we're gonna start talking about um, either refurbishing a fire truck or replacing a fire truck. Uh, not next year, not the year after, but uh, I'll probably have something in the form of a longer Longer range capital request next year uh, for a fire truck. Um, we've got probably about five to ten years on um, one truck before we're looking at doing something uh, beyond a refurbishment. Okay. Because the, those companies like to work on those trucks when they're 15 years old, give or take, and we've got a truck that's a little older than that now. Um, might be the better strategy for us versus buying a completely new truck uh, as long as we can sort of uh, figure out what to do when that truck is out of town uh, at the spa as they say getting, uh, <laughs> getting upfitted uh, get a loaner truck or something like that because okay. the, 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 the thing that keeps coming back to me is that overlapping call scenario yeah. where we've got two calls going on at once that require uh, a class A uh, truck that equipment, that capability to respond. Now, now, traditionally, what's the cadence been on replacing fire trucks? How often do we have to do that? In That's a good question. 
and uh, it's been sparse. Is a good way okay. to put it. Um, <laughs> we've waited typically until the trucks are 30, 32 years old to replace them. Okay. Which is beyond the recommended life by the uh, the NFPA. Mm -hmm. Let make those um, recommendations, and ultimately, what what it comes down to is use. Yes, our trucks don't get as much use as a large city department, uh, but at the same time, some of that technology, for instance, the old truck that we replaced with the truck we purchased a few years back, mm -hmm. um, you couldn't do anything with it because of the configuration of the cab where firefighters rode and so forth. Nobody would look at, um, uh, at upfitting it, uh, refurbishing it. It was just too, you know, everybody said, well, the, the other truck you mentioned, our, at the time, our first line truck, that'd be a great candidate to refurbish. And I said, no, we need, uh, we need to look at the older one first. So you know, that's about where we are, and I don't have the, the number exactly, but uh, engine three is probably in that 16 year, 17 year old range. So we need to, we need to be looking at that down the line. Okay, all right. So you're thinking one in the next three or four years, and then maybe another one a decade or so after that? Like well, that. we probably won't need the the next imminent truck that we need to address would be probably in that five to ten year range. Okay. Looking out. Yep. And then beyond that, um, probably ten years after that. Okay. All right. Or a little bit longer. And our needs may change in that time, uh, but at this point, uh, probably not entertaining anything that's got a ladder on it or a platform on it. Um, the, the cost is staggering. They're about mm. two million bucks. And, uh, it's, you know, that's that's a big elephant to bite. Yeah. So um, we're very fortunate. I mentioned that mutual aid. Um, we've got just about every town surrounding us has that sort of equipment, and we cooperate. We've got equipment they don't have. Mm -hmm. We don't call them in all that often. Uh, so. And there's not many properties here that require a ladder, correct? From the standpoint of fighting a fire, not necessarily. But one of the things that we've noticed is um, from, the, from the chimney fire scenario, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times if there's snow on the roof, it's not a great idea to have mm -hmm. people try to do the circus Correct. act with ladders and try to get up no, there. I agree. So the, we typically would call a ladder in for that. Mm -hmm. and other sorts of roof operations we would generally mm -hmm. do that. So, Probably more so now than years past. They're utilized more and more, and you sort of have to wonder if it's um, people, firefighters, oversight organizations don't want firefighters on ladders on roofs anymore, or if the fact that everybody has those trucks in the area, they're being utilized more. Yeah. So it's probably a little bit of a blend of both. I'm mm -hmm. sure Maya would have um, something to say about using a and aerial apparatus versus ladders and what have you. Hmm. Um, but um, that's not what we're looking at now. Be best served with another good Class A pumper that's hauling 1,000 gallons of water and can, can push 1,500 gallons a minute. And you said that it's about, about a million for a ladder truck. How much is it for the pumper? The pumper, probably by the time we're ready, they're probably going to be crowding a million. Okay. But at that point, the ladder truck will be a million and a half. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Two and a half. It's already two. Yeah. 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 They're going to continue to, to escalate. Sure. And um, I'm sure somebody or somebody in the room, somebody watching, might be thinking, well, what, what's out there for hybrids? What's out there for electric trucks? Uh, very few. There's only a couple manufacturers that are doing it. And right now, uh, off the top of my head, there's only pen like for pure electric, there's only been one or two deliveries. For hybrids, there's been a handful mm. nationwide. It's cities like Phoenix, Sacramento. Um, and they've been able to use grant money for that. So that, the, the, that sort of equipment is really still in the beta stage. Yeah. So. Mm. It takes a lot of torque to pump that much water. So. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I am far from a firefighter, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't help but wonder when you start looking at you know, again, looking at aerial. What about looking at like two men bucket trucks or cherry picker type vehicles that can get you up roof height, but that 
aren't a ladder truck? That's a great question. And the, without diving too deep into all the rules and regulations, yeah. when you spec out a, a truck that's called a fire truck and it's red and it's got sirens yeah. on it, there are certain things they require for ladders and aerial apparatus. Yep. So if you're gonna fight a fire with one of those trucks, the, 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 the industry in the world has more or less fenced you into getting a ladder truck or a platform truck. Okay. Um, certainly the bucket trucks, what a lot of people can see the utilities company companies using would be useful, but in order to be able to pipe water out of the basket, work out of the basket, have a certain hoist capability yeah. and so forth, um, and also be aluminum or steel, um, you know, that, that engineering has morphed into one thing. But yeah. it, you know, when we start talking with companies about options and what have you, uh, you better believe it'll be in the conversation. Can, can we do something that's not a full blown um, and not have to pay that price tag but still get the functionality out? Yeah, because they do have like a, a two man bucket. I don't, and again, I don't know. There's all different heights they'll mm -hmm. reach. Right. Um, I just don't know if the hydraulic fluid, all that, becomes issues, things yeah. like that. Yeah, there's, there's the, 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 the book on designing a regular fire truck is probably about that thick. <laughs> yeah, there's and that's why I, that thick for that's why I don't know all of it. Of course. <laughs> now, are you, are you as, as a chief in general, satisfied with the response times of mutual aid? So if we do need a, a ladder truck from a, a town that gets there quick enough, you aren't yes. feeling that there's a lot? Okay. Yes because one of the things that we benefit from is you know, to the south, to the north, to the east, we have full-time departments yep. that are manned 24-7, that, that have that equipment. Our neighbor to the west, they're really good, and even though they're an on-call, paid on-call department like us, they respond pretty quickly. So generally by the time we're able to get ourselves to a scene from the point of dispatch to uh, the point of being there, and facilitating something, those mutual aid partners are either around the corner mm -hmm. or they're very close by. Okay, great. That would be one of my, big, my biggest concerns, just that if it was, you know, you guys are there in 15 minutes, but it was taking 45 minutes to get mutual aid there, that would be a, a concern about what happens in that half hour. But if it's a couple of minutes, you know, yeah, it's that doesn't seem like it's worth trying to yeah, yeah, of course, what I love to have a, a ladder truck and be able to have everything we need there and, and shave this response time more and have everything we need there in 10 minutes? Absolutely. But you know, there's a cost for everything. Yeah. We've, got to, we've got to balance it out. So um, before I, I'm just going to talk about each uh, line item here, but before I do, are there any questions on what I presented? I just had a silly question, probably sure. a data question. I see that you said the overlapping calls have gone up almost four, four and a half percent to eight and a half percent. So it's a, that's a pretty big jump. Yeah. But the dispatches only went up about twenty percent, and the, the, the overlapping went up like eighty percent or something. Do any reason why? Can you think of it, how that, why that is? I can't. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I could think of that might explain that that trend yeah. would be the fact that we've now got a lot more population in town. And oh. just that nature of you have more people. Okay. So statistically, the chances of something happening are greater at any given time. Okay. And we do see, I didn't bring it with me, but we can drill down to time of day, which day. And generally speaking, most of the calls happen in the afternoon or the evening of the weekends. Yeah. People are at home getting themselves in trouble versus <laughs> out doing their thing during the, during the day, during sure. the week, when they're maybe causing trouble. Like you're in trouble eating cooking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well. It's funny you mention that because probably the, the biggest offender, and I've tried to skin the cat many ways with the, the different apartment complexes, is uh, negligent cooking. Yeah. yeah. And, oh. and burn food and We've had some very close calls with with some near misses on kitchen fires, and you go in and the cabinets are scorched, or uh, somebody's throwing water on a grease fire, and yeah. you can see where there was fire everywhere, and yeah. then it just burned itself out. So there was no fuel for it to continue with. Um, but yeah, cooking is the cooking is our nemesis, mm -hmm. and the cell phone is the other one because you can almost. It's an, almost impossible to burn, burn food as badly as some of these folks that burn food when you're not completely engrossed in something. And it's probably a phone, whether it's cooking or driving. 
it's kind of like, kind of a bad joke, but it's the, it's the truth. I also wouldn't read too much into the difference because if you have 365 days of the year and you have 100 calls versus 120 calls, yeah. the likelihood of, of having two overlapping goes up dramatically because you have a set amount of time. It's like the birthday problem where like, if you have a certain number of people in a room, the chances of two people having the same birthday go to almost 100% after you hit a certain yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You get to a certain point where when you're adding in an extra call over the course of the year, it becomes more likely that it's going to land on the same time as another call yeah, as sure. you walk. So If we're going from 25 to 35%, that would be overlapping, that would be a much a different conversation. But 4% is yeah. noticeable, but not, you know. Right. So the time will tell for this year. Right. Yeah. You know what happens, and we try. I try not to use the year over year as a good conversation for this evening. But we really want to look at you know sort of that Venn diagram of last five year average, last four yes. year average, two year average, just to see what's really happening. Because we are still, if you look at in the grand scheme of things, a smaller department with a a modest number of, of runs and calls. Um, you know, about a call every other day, give or take. And, yep. um, okay. So, uh, so going through. The, uh, the first item that I have for you this evening is the public safety complex expenses. Uh, asked for a 3% uh, increase, adding $1,000 to that. And the primary reason is we're, we're at the point now where we've seen um, a lot of the dog and cat miscellaneous types of things in the building starting to cause us problems. Um, door handles, different sorts of hardware. Um, this doesn't cover all of some of the capital requests. And Chief Demetropoulos has uh, some things that he's put forth for the building, but these are more of those nickel and dime things that seems to come up uh, quite often with uh, light fixtures going, or you know, for instance, um, we need to go through and, and probably replace all the exit lights, the emergency exit lights, just because the new batteries are gonna cost as much as a new device. So looking at what our oil consumption is this year versus the last few years, and then looking at what we could do with a little bit more money. I think we'll be able to accomplish a lot of that work um, in the coming year and then years going on with you know, a slight bump in that. And just to clarify, this line item is for the whole building. That's There's exactly There's none on your right. budget. Okay. Exactly right. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yep, for the whole building. Um, for our chief wages, haven't asked for anything there. I'll arm wrestle Jeff afterwards for something there. Um, I have asked for another small increase for fire department wages. Um, one of the reasons why this year uh, we haven't done any um, reserve fund requests for payroll is because we've had the proceeds from those fire watches that are, are built out um, higher than either at or slightly higher than our costs our personnel and equipment costs for that. So that's been able, we've been able to wash that and then um, have a little bit of uh, funding. So you have a flat rate on that, like a police detail rate or ambulance standby rate? We do, we have, and it's in the, uh, it's in the fee schedule. Yeah. So it's, yeah, fl uh, flat fee for uh, personnel or firefighter and then flat fee for apparatus. Does that go up ever or has that been stagnant for a while? That's been the same uh, probably for the last four years, mm. but honestly, uh, uh, 22, we had one or two shorter fire watches, but this has really been the year of the fire watch um, in terms of the, the, the amount of time, that, the hours that we've spent yeah. um, on it. So we haven't, we haven't raised it up. Um, it's been in line with other, other towns. Oh, it is, in, okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I'm on South County EMS, and and they do like a, again, I'm throwing numbers out, but they do like a $65 an hour, and then, you know, and again, I'm using fictitious numbers, but then a $200 an hour for the equipment, and X number of dollars for gas, and, and they can come up with a relatively, you know, if they've got a standby for an extended amount of time, you know, it would be, I'm not saying it should be a money maker. Mm -hmm. I am not. But I think you should be fairly compensated for it in line with other. Well, and also I think that there should be a certain amount of 
of stick with the apartment complexes to encourage them to get their systems up to spec so that we don't have to, you know, if, if it's going to go up every year because they're not doing maintenance on their system, it should sting a little bit. Well, you know? that's and some of the conversations I've had were of that nature. And we are, um, we're, we're being compensated similar to those numbers that you mentioned okay. for personnel. Um, and then for the equipment, it's not quite as much, but we've covered our costs. In yeah. the summertime, you don't need to keep the trucks running. In the wintertime, you do. But we've been able to, to cover and then, again, get a little bit ahead. And the um, and it is it is very surprising when you hand a, uh, uh, an apartment complex uh, an invoice for $12,000 <laughs> for three days. Mm -hmm. And that's on top of them having an alarm technician there for maybe three or four days. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine they, they're, they're into this incident for a lot of money. Yep. And, and they have noticed. Okay. And it's, it's not uncommon. Our, our, uh, our peer organizations in surrounding towns that also have uh, businesses that have sprinkler systems, that have um, alarm systems, what have you. Um, yeah, they, they also have similar experiences, but yep. people generally get their house in order fairly quick. Yeah. Because it's not great to say to your firefighters, you know, the text will come through from me or the deputy chief. Okay, fire watch at XYZ, who's available from 6 p.m. to midnight, <laughs> who's available from midnight to 6. six yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it can be a, a bit of a challenge, but we always cover it. Okay. We seem to. I, do, I do think it's worth, not necessarily right the second, but in general, looking at having that be a stepped increase over time as the costs of the department go up you know four years in, in the last four years expenses around everything it's like doubled <laughs> you know so if you haven't addressed it in four years it might make sense to, to look at that rate again at some point very true and i've also looked at, at uh, potentially bumping up our wages uh, hourly wages for firefighters right now it's 18 bucks an hour mm -hmm. um, which isn't an awful lot when you look at everything that they do and, and the training wage is minimum wage 15 dollars an hour so um with any luck with with this, we can do a little bit to help keep keep pace with inflation. Nobody's on the Sunderland Fire Department as a career. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to say some people have taken their experience and made it into a career. I actually got a handful of them and um, that have done that. But you know, it's just one of those things where we want to look at keeping uh, keeping pace as folks get with any luck a, a wage increase at their typical their nine to five jobs. Getting a little bit for here would be nice too. Yeah. Um, the part-time line item, uh, you will see that there is a, uh, a negative there. And the reason for that is we have a new clerk and there are new circumstances with that new clerk uh, as far as compensation. And it's completely transparent and the person is on board with this. So uh, what I'm requesting is uh, a decrease mm -hmm. from years past. Uh, but this is uh, something that that person and I have agreed to is fair and, and something that they're able to work with. Right. So this person's basically at the end of it, starting at entry level, and then will be yes. compensated as she moves, or they, I don't. But then the where the last person was probably maxed out, right? Or pretty close to maxed out? Safe, safe to say, yeah. So, and yeah, that's the, uh, expected. That's yeah, definitely. And um, the, the new person's working out really well. Great. Um, starting not quite in the, in the basement, but uh, with, uh, with a lot to learn. But that's going extremely well. Um, expenses, um, asked for another $4,000 uh, here, uh, primarily because we try to buy two sets of new turnout gear per year. So we have a uh, year for our firefighters that is well within date. Um, for a lot of these classes that they will attend, they have to be in gear that is in date. The turnout gear is good for 10 years. Gotcha. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent, that's the number. We don't get to make it up. And uh, for instance, Massachusetts Fire Academy, they do a phenomenal job. Our people go to academy classes a lot. And if you don't have gear that's within date, they thank you for showing up and they ask you to go home. Mm -hmm. So 
you are, uh, you know, we're, we're up against that, and the cost of gear has risen um, just about for a set of a set of turnout gear, uh, depending on the features and options, about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars per set. So, and that's in the last two years over that. So asking for that four thousand to help offset that, and then another thousand just for everything else that's gone up, yep. from fuel to um, you know, buying our uh, you know, buying paper and ink and toner and everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, the last two, or the, the next two, looking at civil defense and the radio system. The civil defense is our reverse 911 system, uh, the phone system, and that's a little bit of a moving target. We never quite know what that bill is going to be until we get to you know, after town meeting. The, the invoice usually comes in in May. Yep. Um, of course, the day after. Oh, naturally. <laughs> uh, but I, what I did is I took last year's increase and I baked it into this year's ask okay. for that. So um, that should should cover. Uh, the FERCOC radio system, uh, not sure what everybody's awareness is of that, but that radio system is the old uh, radio system that we used for both paging, for dispatch, and also for communications. We have switched communications over to a Mass State Police system. Uh, we're the first county in the Commonwealth to do that. And all things considered, it went okay. Um, but the old radio system is still in use, uh, with bailing wire and bubble gum to uh, page. So when we have um, an incident, the pagers here will go off, and these are still running off of that old radio system, and they still need to maintain it. So that's why the assessment's coming through. Um, I haven't necessarily heard what's gonna happen when we start paging off of digital, which is the new radio system, and that old analog system that is represented by the line item here goes away. Um, but we still need it. And they're probably gonna send us a bill, so here's how much money I want to cover it. Gotcha. Um, with any luck, that won't be there in coming years, but it is now. Okay. Um, so that's our assessment. And then for the town park, uh, Flatwood last year, uh, recognizing that we've got um, a, a pretty solid facility up there and we've been able to do some work there. Uh, we've had some generous uh, both residents and businesses that have helped us out with that. Uh, but of course we can't count on it. So this figure represents what we need to uh, keep the lights on and handle issues and wear and tear in the building. Um, the Firemen's Association also uh, invests money into the, into the property and a lot of time as well. Uh, that's not compensated, uh, but this is just that, uh, that amount of money that we'd need for things like gutter replacements and maybe having a, a tree company come in in an emergency and break fix type of things. Now, just curiosity. Any idea what the average yearly revenue is on that place from charging for rentals and stuff? Off the top of my head, by the time you back out the utility costs, the deposits, it's a couple of thousand dollars. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's not. Nobody, you know, no organization's getting rich rent at all. <laughs> oh no, and I didn't think <laughs> anyone was. No, I just. But it's yeah, it's a, it's it's not a, it's not a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. And one of the things that um, that those funds will do is probably be a party to some of some, if not one of uh, the capital requests that I have in mind. Mm -hmm. you know, not to speak for the association, but some of those funds that have been accumulating, uh, looking to invest those in something for the department. Yeah, I can't get something uh, with the amount of money that there is. I'm not going to be able to get much, but perhaps with a uh, capital request asking for uh, participation from the town, something can be done. So that's for next year, the year after, what have you. Okay. I'm all set with questions on this. Yeah, I'm good. I asked all mine, I think it was <laughs> Oh, I think I'm also finished me. I'd like to ask, um, 
a little question. Sure. So if, if the uniform is 10 years old, is it like there's a sell-by date on it, like on a canned tomato soup, yeah. so they can <laughs> check? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything's, there is a, um, there is a label, it's an NFPA tag on the inside, and it's got the date of manufacture. Yeah, okay. Yep. It's and you look at that, and the thing is, it's on uh, the turnout pants, the coat, the helmet, the boots, and gloves, uh, your hood that you wear under, and... Um, so they go to the train, they get checked in a million places. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> like a spider monkey on National Geographic. You've got to, you've got to present, your, present your equipment, it's checked by an instructor. And um, sometimes, depending on the facility, they may have uh, loaner equipment, but that hasn't happened lately. Okay. Because of the cost of it. Yeah. 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 So, Chief, for anybody who's curious and heard that we're paying more to use less of the radio system, we still need to pay the full amount in order for the system to be operable, right? It's not like we can pay less because we're not using half that's, the features, right? That, that's exactly right. And one of the reasons why the assessment keeps increasing, um, thanks for clarifying that, Jeff, beyond general um, inflation is the fact that the parts for that radio equipment are very hard to find. And the costs, uh, they're, they're um, Sometimes you've got to look at uh, collectors, dealers for some of these parts, just because it's a it's a very Antique. old system. One one of the challenges with having way back when a brand new radio system is eventually it's going to be a very old radio system before everybody else's is a very old radio system, and that's what we've run into. And the FERCOG as well as um, the Franklin County Fire Chiefs Tri-State Organization done a really good job of piecing all that together, robbing from Peter to pay Paul, if you will, in terms of equipment. Uh, but it's all going to operate just as it, as it would have three or four years ago um, in order for us to page. When the paging is switched over, uh, we'll have to see what the utility will be of that system. But okay. that's right. We're still using all of it. Not, uh, not for as many operations, but we still need all the antennas and everything else. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. All right. Our last budget presentation today is Police Department. Sorry, Chief. <laughs> Took all the money already. So the fire chief still here. I'll make sure I cover one of the topics he touched upon was the capital uh, including expenses. So I did submit two different uh, capital requests this year. One is for a replacement cruiser. Um, you'll see that the cruiser costs have increased every year. Uh, the last car we were able to get is a hybrid cruiser uh, that we were able to purchase at through Harper Funds. So this would be to replace the day shift car may see driving around during the days, Sunday through Saturday. Um, that car, uh, as of that writing, had just under 112,000 miles and averages about 17,000 miles a year. Um, that car usually uses between 13 to 1,500 gallons a year. Um, the Tahoe that we replaced with the new one, the Tahoe was using about 1,900 gallons. So that, that was a substantially uh, less uh, fuel usage. And um, like I said in the, uh, in the statement here, we have been kind of wavering on replacing cruisers in the past. We didn't have really a set time. It wasn't always said, okay, every two years we're gonna replace this. Um, so you know, we did replace one car fully. Uh, that was the, uh, the Dodge Durango. Uh, we paid for that cost. That I think was just under 49,000. Uh, and this March will be four years that we've had that. Um, the other two cars that we replaced were uh, through insurance costs. So it was, one of them was about 15 and a half to 16,000 because insurance didn't cover everything. The second car was a full insurance coverage. And then the last car is um, the hybrid that you, uh, 
that you guys purchased through ARPA funds, and that was um, the evening shift car, uh, and that replaced the tower. So the unfortunate uh, cost is $73,500 um, uh, a replacement for the cruiser. The other spot is the uh, capital improvement for the public safety complex. Um, this is, you know, the fire chief and I sit down and go over different things that are working, not working, and, and uh, what needs to be replaced, and he uh, expressed what he was looking at doing with uh, the fire department or the fact that he would not need to use capital expenses. And we went through and saw that the, uh, I submitted a full uh, capital expense of 14000 Out of that 14000 um, 2100 to 2400 so I think it's going to be 2100 is a quote that we've received in the past for the Sally Port or the two-car garage or the police station. That drain is clogged full of sand, and uh, when you get onto the other side of the elbow, which heads through the building, the chief was able to find that all that is clear. Uh, so it's somewhere in the Sally Port. So uh, to get a, 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 someone to come out to do that, it's going to be with a jetting system. It's going to be about two uh, $2,000. Um, we unfortunately cannot use the sewer department one because that's for a much bigger pipe, mm. uh, and that would blow out the pipe uh, that <laughs> we have. Um, and we've tried using snakes, and we've tried using um, wet dry vacs. We've gotten maybe two to three feet, and we can't get beyond that. So we need something that's more professional, so like a motor motor or things like that. So those kind of companies. The other uh, remaining portion of that money is about $2,500 for lighting. So we did use some money from Harper to replace the facade at the front of the police station. And now that that's replaced, um, there's really no lights on it. So at night, um, unless you know it's a police station or a fire station, you can't see the sign. So that's the cost there. And then the bigger bunch is $9,400, and that is for the rear camera system uh, on the existing video system we have in the back personnel door. The back personnel door has a key fob system that um, I think about six years ago uh, was tweaked to make sure it still worked, uh, but in the last two years it has not. Uh, and the camera system, there's two cameras back there. One of them has absolutely failed for a while now. Uh, so we have only one camera and uh, the, the cost here is to replace that and unfortunately they cost a lot of money. It's a 270 degree camera. So the total cost for the uh, public safety complex is 14000 So that's the capital expenses that I see. All right. So yes. I don't want to ask you to spend more money. Yeah. But if we're going to pay $2,100 to have that drain cleared, is there some type of corrective measure that needs to be taken so it doesn't fill up with sand again? So I don't think that that has had any preventative maintenance since before I got there, okay, and it's been slowly filling, and we've yeah. been trying to do it as employees. We've been trying to do it ourselves. Uh, so to answer your question, I don't know what can be done. Okay, uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll seek you know more professional uh, assistance on what we can do if there's a bumper guard that can prevent. Because you know when you park the cruiser and all melts, right? All the sand and the salt and it just clogs the pipes. Yeah, um, I didn't know if there was like you know, and again. Is there a catch basin? Right. Is there like a glorified kitchen strainer, yeah. right? That like, you know, every month you just take out and dump it. Yeah. You know, again, I have no idea. I'm just, I agree 100% it needs to be done. I would just like to see that not be an ongoing sure. issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would definitely be a question that we'll be asking when they come in to actually do that. And we can find out if there's going to be any way to prevent that from happening. Maybe a flushing program or something. Yeah. Something, yeah. And I know it all eventually connects to the, um, what's this system called on the other side? Well, there's an oil separator. Oil separator. Yeah. That, goes, that pipe goes from your salad port or under my office yeah. into the truck bay on the fire side and then into our drains and then it continues out to that settlement oil separator between us and the highway park. Yeah, so that, that will have to eventually, maybe next year or whatever, we'll have to get cleaned out as well. Um, but unfortunately for me and for us, it's <laughs> just the police sally port side. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the fire chief went in and took a look at the pipe between my sally port and his. And it's clear. Um, 
you know, so we, we were able to go through and there were clean outs in the floor. Yeah. And we lifted the clean outs and it looked clear uh, as far as we could see. But it's yeah. somewhere, chief, maybe somebody dropped a baseball in there or something. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, we can see in pretty decent. We, we, we put in, like I said, a wet dry vac with a smaller hose. and. And most of the holes we're able to get in. So we've gotten two, three, maybe four feet in. Mm. But that's a 22 foot pipe. Mm. Uh, and I just, we can't get to the other side. Mm. So I don't know. And it's only a two inch pipe, I think. Yeah. It's, I mean, if anything, it's a baseball. But I doubt it is. Because there was a grate on there. But that grate, it's, it's a regular floor drain. So it's not stopping silt and sand and tiny little pebbles. <laughs> so something got caught up and it's just, it's so you know. Man. Well, that's something we'll eventually. Uh, a lot of bubble gum, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of gum. Chief, <laughs> we'll before, before you move on to the operating budget, yeah. um, on the cruiser. Yes. So seventy-three thousand five hundred. What's the breakdown between vehicle cost and fit-out cost on that, approximately? Or is that just seventy-three for the vehicle? No, that's. Everything. Okay. That's to get it out from the uh, place and then get it all black and white and put on the, the, the lights and the sirens and the cage and all that stuff. Unfortunately, the, the car that we have now that it would, would be replacing, different size. A lot of things don't fit. Um, this is basing, and just so you know, this is basing, and if the, if the town still wants to maintain getting the hybrid like we just got uh, through ARPA funds two years ago, uh, there are other vehicles that are cheaper. The Chevy Tahoe comes in under this, but it's a different look, it's a different type, it's a Ford, it's a Chevy. You know, we already have a Ford. We had a Ford, a Chevy, and a Dodge, and we have Ford and Dodge, and that's it. So it's, it's sometimes it's easier just having one type of car. Uh, so that's what this is going off of. It is not uh, an electric car, because again, those really aren't at the patrol level use yet. You know, you've got about 220 miles per charge, once you have the police equipment into it, it's only about 180 to 185 miles per charge. That doesn't do a lot. Um, you know, we're gonna have officers making sure that they plug that thing in every night, uh, or else I'll be getting a phone call to come pick somebody up and drive them back to the station. It's just something that's, it doesn't make sense for a patrol use yet. But the hybrid, which is the one we just got, you know, I, I pulled the gas numbers on it. Um, the Tahoe, like I said, was using about 1,900 gallons. And so that Tahoe was ended the end of uh, like the first week of January of last year, and the new car started right after that. So six months and six months, and that car used, or that gas key, used 1,400 gallons. Well, the Tahoe itself used 1,900 gallons by itself the previous year. So just in six months, we saved 500 gallons with that new car. So I would assume that if we were to replace car one that normally uses about 1,400 gallons, the new car would bring that number down. Uh, so we'll in, in turn use less fuel and still have a consistent looking department. It's gonna, they're all gonna, the vehicles are gonna look the same instead of having three or four different types. But normally, um, you know, everything's gone up in cost. Uh, to outfit a police cruiser now is anywhere, depending on how many lights you put on it, and, you know, you gotta get the cage, the radar, that's anywhere between uh, 14 and a half thousand to $18,000 to outfit a police cruiser. Thank you. Yeah. So that's 60, 60. Um, I submitted two budgets. Uh, one is a uh, basic budget and one is a uh, expanded services budget. The, uh, the basic budget, um, we're going through negotiations this year with the union, so I don't have numbers to go off to project what the salaries will be for, uh, for, for next year. So I'm basing it on a certain percentage, and that's why you'll see that the, um, the entire police budget, between contracts and percentages, <coughs> went up uh, between payroll and expenses, I'm sorry, was uh, $18,329. So it's just 2% uh, over, I'm sorry, 0.02% over 3%. Uh, so the expenses went up um, $1,500. That expenses, I'd say just under 1,200 of that 1,500 was that CAD system I told you about last year that we were slowly getting increases because uh, EOPS was only covering a certain amount. So I believe uh, this budget will be the cap uh, of what we're spending without, you know, uh, quota increases uh, or inflation. 
but I believe that just under $1,200 is going to cover the portion that we need to cover for us. And the CAD system is a computer aided dispatch. That's what we use to communicate with dispatch, with the, uh, the, the mobile data terminals and the cruisers. Uh, we're able to make calls, do business checks. Uh, when I say calls, I mean you know the calls that we, res we respond to, not telephone calls. Uh, and it also uh, connects us with dispatch, so we can see an in-house check of just not just our information, but stuff around the county, because we're all part of the same system. Um, so yeah, the expenses went up fifteen hundred, and everything else averaging uh, went up. The only one I also wasn't uh, was not sure about was the clerk wages. Uh, she's covered under the personnel committee, so I don't know what that, if anything, is going to be increased. So I put it in and built it in as a potential increase. Um, the, ex the expanded services budget is basically the same budget, but I took money out of um, the part-time uh, budget, and not a lot, uh, took 14300 out, and then I added a full-time officer addition. Uh, two years ago, you were able to increase our staffing of full-time to six full-time, counting myself. Um, and with the removal of a lot of the part-time academies and, and the pool of applicants about picking part-timers, we have to decide as a town if we're going to just maintain the status quo or if we're going to try to continue with increase of full-time officers. Um, that's just something that we have to decide as a, as a community. So uh, I did not do it this, this budget, but I did ask for it for next year's budget, understanding full well that there's unknowns about costs of what we have. So, you know, we can still do the policing with the initial budget, um, but I would like to see the department start to head towards the um, having a full-time officer, male, female, whatever, uh, going through uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, instead of relying on a lot of the part-time Personnel. So, uh, like I said, I did take uh, fourteen thousand, um, fourteen thousand three hundred dollars out of the part-time wages. Um, so it wasn't an initial hit. Uh, and then, if that is a, a budget that we can go off of, then I can look at the following year to see how much more of the part-time wages we could uh, remove. Uh, because part-time wages is basically split up into two different categories. One is to fill the already known schedule shifts that we need them to fill. And then the other part of the part-time wages is for uh, holidays and benefit time. So the full-timers have time off, part-timers usually cover that, plus um, the full-timers can have the holiday off, so the part-timers will come in and work it. So three shifts a holiday, 12 holidays, 12 enumerated holidays a year, that times the part-time rate gave us the, uh, the holiday rate. And that is, Basically, it. Um, no, nothing else really screams a lot of increases uh, throughout, whether it be the level funded budget or the expanded one. Uh, again, we'll know more as the union negotiations are near uh, its completion, and we'll be able to have all that done before time meeting. What percent is covered by part time now? I'm sorry? You're trying to get to full time. So we have six full time, six part time. Yeah. Uh, and out of that, really to give you an opportunity to see the space to understand um, why the town is considering purchasing the property and get get feedback from the town so I don't know um, I'll, I'll be there assuming yeah I can but uh, to answer questions but please come up talk to us to, we were the purpose is to hear from from residents so um, please come and, and check it out and talk to us yeah and I just want to you know, reiterate that, um, you know, everyone in town will have potentially a vested interest in this building and everybody should get a chance to look at it and have some thoughts and opinions um, and be able to make some informed decisions when the asks come around. And the other thing I'll note is for those who might not be able to make it on Saturday. Um, FCAT is also not able to make it, but they're going to try and come in at some point and do a video tour that they can um, put on and make available for people who can Oh, make nice. It. Well, so, that's great. Yep. All right. Anything else on that, or should we move on? Um, no, I think that's it. All right. Next up, we have ARPA review of projects. Yes. So um, we had our capital planning committee meeting, and at that 
point there was some discussion on ARPA and it was suggested, uh, hey, where, where do we stand with ARPA? So I um, thought it was a, a good suggestion and a good time given that we have less than a year to expend all the funds or dedicate the funds um, just to see what's outstanding, how much is left. So um, I'm going to go through quickly and I'm going to describe it, say how much money it was and what, what the status is, but feel free to stop me at any point if you want more details. Um, police details for the Sunderland Elementary School VAX buses was $436.56. That is complete. 100 COVID-19 rapid tests for $1,228. Complete. Uh, laptop replacement for police cruiser, $756. <coughs> I'm not going to do the cents. Yeah, no, get it. Yeah. Uh, complete. One year bridge academy for four officers, $818 complete. 10 um, AED defibrillators, 21,427 complete. Six vehicle radio repeaters uh, for public safety, 62,000 complete. Uh, the replacement of the police cruiser, 53,750 complete. Um, wiring of the public safety complex uh, Backup generator, $5,298 complete. Uh, repair of the PA system at the elementary school, $7,378 complete. Um, repair leaks and replacement of the pressure regulator um, <coughs> at the elementary school, $18,591 complete. Uh, phase four of the exterior rim band replacement, uh, 9,500 complete. Sunderland Elementary School window replacement, 125,000 uh, has not started yet. Okay, so again, I just have a question yeah. on that, $125,000. Is that a locked in price? Have we signed a contract, anything like that? No. So we do not know how that could come back and be Again, I'm over exaggerating, but that could come back and be two hundred and fifty thousand potentially. Yep. It could still increase. Okay. Yep. And also we need to have that money locked in by December. And I'm assuming the school is aware that they kinda of need to get that going. Yep. And I think part of part of this process in my mind is to go back and say, Hey, use it or lose it by July one because we need to know how to spend it, and we yeah. need six months to do it, or whatever. Right. Uh, maybe not July one, but the, you know, give up well, a no, pre-December deadline. August thirtieth. <laughs> well, no, but in order for people to get quotes and oh, prices yeah. well, and everything takes else, takes July time. one is not unreasonable for money to be contracted. Yeah. Uh, we replaced a dishwasher at the elementary school for fourteen thousand seven hundred and sixty-six dollars. We replaced a boiler at the elementary school for $41,480. Uh, we replaced the phone system at the school for $20,750. We paid $32,541 in retirement benefits for elementary school teachers. We paid $3,000 for last year's Mosquito Control District uh, participation. We have not paid $3,750 for the phase two needs assessment for the senior center. Because that was kind of put on the back burner um, while we we're investigating Plumtree. Um, the oil tank monitoring system at the elementary school, $8,887 is complete. Can you back up one second? Yes. Um, the, Jess mentioned this earlier, and you just mentioned it, the, the payout for retirement for teachers. Is that paying out like the recruit sick time or something like that? That's what that is? Okay. So it, it's, it's, it's second vacation. Okay. Yep. I assume that was the case. I assume that the actual retirement money themselves was being handled. Yeah, the, the retirement board. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that is being phased out in future contracts is, is limiting the, the sick and vacation buyback. So it's not quite okay. as um, extreme <laughs> and unanticipated. Um... Sorry, sorry, no, uh, seventy-five hundred dollars to replace to study the replacement of the oil tank at the elementary school is done. 
Uh, there were some minor repair, emergency repairs to the public safety HVAC complex, 2,170 that was done. <coughs> Meeting room technology upgrades, six, um, 6,404 is done. Booking room laptop replacement uh, at the public safety complex, $922 done. Financial consulting, um, complete $2,000. School Street Engineering. So this was... Um, was it the $50,000 they asked for for that? Now I'm, now I'm getting confused. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait. Sorry. That was for the completing the sidewalk on School Street, right? Well, that was to get yes. the plans yeah. to a place where we could put yes. it out to bid, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, that is incomplete. That was 75000 It's incomplete? Incomplete. So who's, the, who's working on it? Um, that would be me at some point. Um, so is, is there somebody on board doing the work or hasn't happened No, it, it hasn't okay. started. Um, Village Center Consultant... Fifty thousand dollars. That's in progress. That's the consultant that came in. Stantec. Yeah, Stantec. Yeah, Stantec. Yep. Um, uh, elevator maintenance. Um, Eighty-five hundred dollars. That's complete. That was the. They changed how the doors open in an emergency, and so we had to get something changed. Yep. Uh, Forty-five hundred for the public safety complex facade repairs that the chief mentioned, complete. Um, Fifty-one thousand dollars for the exhaust removal system in the fire truck bay, complete. Um, Basketball hoop brackets that can go up and down, they can yeah. raise and lower. $2,000 um, in progress. 195000 for the oil tank replacement um, and the overage, uh, which was 10700 um, both in progress. Uh, Plum Tree Road Survey, 3000 that was done. Oil Tank Design, 29800 done. Public Safety Complex Generator Install Overage, 1400 done. Public Safety <coughs> Complex Ceiling and Painting, 4000 done. Library Technology, $350 done. Uh, accounting Project, 25000 it, it's. I'm pretty sure it's done. Um, we're still working with the accountants, so. Yeah. But I think that 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 additional sum of money to do the catch up has been um, expended. Uh, we have not paid this year's um, Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. We haven't been billed for it yet, so three thousand dollars is still pending for that. Um, land. Fill monitoring increased um, significantly last year, so we used 1500 to pay for um, some of the increase from ARPA funds that is being paid currently. Uh, replacement of computers, the... Um, the booking computer? The Not the booking room the computer. These one. were the accounting computers. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I think... A additional that's two thousand three thousand for additional mowings because it's such a wet year. Six hundred dollars for the sandy cans while the restrooms were out. Those were both done. Um, so the two other outstand in progress is the fifty percent of the trench box because we got a grant for fifty percent, um, and then the street lights replacing and repairing them is still in progress. So. Okay. So, total, we have committed and or spent $929,961 um, out of a total of 
So we have about 154,000 not committed yet. Okay. And of that, we have 203,000 that there's either the work hasn't started, there hasn't been a true bid on it between the windows, the engineering, the engineering things like that. Yep. So we need to keep something in reserve for those. Yep. Because the overages, I mean, I think we've seen. So here's, here's what I'm imagining. And this kind of goes into our next item if it, on, the old, on the old business also, which is we choose a deadline for the departments, July 1st or whatever we decide. If the money isn't committed to some, you know, if, if they haven't gotten a bid that's approved and the money is, is it committed and we have a final dollar amount, they lose that money because we can't let them. I, I don't want to give that money back to the government because people are dragging their feet on it and it comes December time. At that point, we will have a final dollar amount of what we have left. Um, and I would feel much more comfortable having the conversation about the premium pay when we know how much we have left. And as far as I'm concerned, at that point, what we have left, unless something big is coming between now and then, would be we would decide how we want to allocate that amongst the employees of the town. Does that kind of make sense to the members of the board? Well, no. So I don't, I don't think you want to say we have $150,000 left and we're going to figure out how to allocate that to the employees of the town. I think we need to see what other emergent things are out there, get those bids in, and that may drop that number down more mm -hmm. and it might not be a hundred and fifty thousand dollars well that's what i'm saying i don't i don't want to have that the premium pay discussion until we really know what, what kind of money we have at the end of the other part that's going on um and i the way i see it is that if if, if a product isn't committed with with a plan and a, a bid by july they're not going to get it done by december well they don't have to have it done by december it's just Contract it'll bid or it has to be to whatever yeah. it's gonna be. Yeah. Allocated and so unfortunately being such a small town and working with such a small budget, you take that window project at the school and say that ends up coming in twenty percent higher than they thought. Yeah. Where do we come up with another twenty five thousand dollars to put into those windows if we don't if we don't have a committed price, is it a well, that's what I'm saying. That they'd have to. They would have to have a committed price by July, July first. One. By July one, they would have to have a signed contract with the the high, with the bidder they chose. If not, sorry, that product is no longer getting covered by upper money. Can they sign anything or above what we have? I mean, they could <laughs> if they want to pay for it. Yeah. Um, is that for replacement of all windows? Is what does that number cover? Is I think that's all windows? the windows on the south side of the building. I think, yeah, the I, I don't know if I can, if I remember exactly. I thought it was the cafeteria side, maybe. I'm not going oh. north and south. Okay. I'm really not. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the other thing to consider, since we're budgeting now, you know, we're using all the funds for general government services. We can't put it in a stabilization fund, but... We can use it for the operating budget and put free cash in a state. You know, I guess my point is that, you know, if we don't want, if we're not sure we want to make, if we don't want to tell the school you can't, we're not going to, we're going to take away all your money. We could put some money away for future uses, um, you know, uh, because we may say, yeah, it's important to do the windows and the school couldn't get their stuff together, but... You know, we still think it's an important project that we're going to have to pay for. So, that's, that's sad. yeah. So, 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 can we put in this spring's budget to town meeting, moving any of the money that was that was allocated via ARPA for products that aren't by that point in in play to operating expenses? And move an appropriate amount of money into the capital stabilization fund, and then 
we don't lose the ARPA money, and, it, and when they're ready, when they get their ducks in a row, the money's sitting there waiting for them. I think technically, yes. I mean, does it pass the straight face test? Like, is somebody going to go, well, technically it wasn't ARPA money, but yeah, you kind of <laughs> use the ARPA money so you can do it. Like, that I don't know if they're going to come back and, you know, slap us for. But my my reading is that, yes, you can do that. You can, I, I guess it's more, it's more of how comfortable we all are... Um, saying, hey, we got this money for emergency use, and we're going to use it to... Like a new hybrid police cruiser. Yep. An option would be we could shift... And here's another question, I guess. Is the library project, or the school project, do the hybrid cruiser something we know we can be in contract with by July 1st? Yep. An option would be we could shift the money from the already bought one of it anyways, and then be able to have that much more money in capital expenses to be able to pay for the library project. Yep. I mean, one of the... One of the things to consider is there's a in capital expenses to be able to pay for the library project. Yep. I mean, one of the one of the things to consider is there's a capital request for a two hundred sixty thousand dollar loader that we're thinking about financing in years. Pay hundred thousand up front of the two sixty so that we're financing it less and we have more in capital. Like there, there are yeah. a bunch of different ways we can right. wind up spending we can that armor. Spend, we can find the ways. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that maybe the way to think about it is, hey, what is the drop dead deadline or is there a, a better way to control the funds so that we have more time flexibility with yeah. them, I guess? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I get that the school is dealing with the furnace and the oil tank and all of that going on and probably windows that are holding water and not leaking and you know not broken aren't their highest priority but i would just it's a big amount of money for those windows and i just don't want to see that lost no. or have to find a way to come up with that money in two three five years when they are Leaking and broken and um, so do we want to maybe have that conversation partially yeah. with the capital committee as well and say hey the select boards talked about maybe using ARPA funds to fund some of the capital requests so that we can be building up our capital reserve. Well, I can certainly bring that to the next capital meeting if we want to. Or we could schedule a, a joint meeting. I mean, I, I don't necessarily know we need to schedule a joint meeting for this. This seems like something that we can, you and I can easily, but um, it's certainly something that our next capital committee meeting we can discuss. And if they want a joint meeting, well, then, yeah, then we deal with it. But yeah. Yeah. I don't think it really warrants having a joint meeting over, but um, it's certainly something that our next capital committee meeting we can discuss. And if they want a joint meeting, well, then, yeah, then we deal yeah. with it. But yeah, yeah I'm, you're fine to present for us, in my opinion. Agreed, I don't know Okay, so yeah, we'll, at the next capital planning committee meeting, we'll discuss the different options there. Um, and at a future meeting, this body will decide on the, the engineering is line we want to put in terms of when money needs to be allocated in order to not lose money. And we can check in with the school, and we can, the, the, the engineering is pretty quick once yeah. you decide who you want. Yeah. yeah. And I think also, you know, sometimes people just need to have a, a fire lit a little bit. And if you, if you tell Ben, hey, this needs to happen, otherwise the money might get held up and it might take longer to get it done in the long run, he might be motivated to get it done. Right? And like I said, I'm sure they've got so much going on with that oil oh, yeah. tank work. Totally. All right. Uh, anything else on the ARPA stuff before we move on? Nope. Um, and in terms of the ARPA request pay premium pay, which is our next item, is that something you guys want to talk about right now or is that something you'd like? No, to I think we totally need to, to know what's going to go on with yeah, because at this point we don't know whether we have a thousand dollars left or two hundred fifty thousand dollars left, and so I, I don't. I, I would feel much more comfortable waiting until we have a final idea of what wherever all, every other penny is going. This is how much we have left, and then we can make a decision about what we want to do with that money. Um, and that could, that can be a decision that we need to discuss that relates to all town employees. Um, yeah. You know, as, as a 
as a block. Um, all right. Next up, we have select board updates. Um, the police negotiations are ongoing, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> At advice of my, of my best, of my better half. Um, that's it for me. I don't have anything else. Anything from you guys? So tomorrow I have South County EMS. So hopefully, well, by the next meeting, I'll know a little more about. You know, we know that the Jordan Sparks has accepted the job and that he'll be starting February 6th. So I do think we need to probably set up a hop on, you know, 10 minute intro to the, yeah, the mm -hmm. townspeople, whatever. But. Sounds good. Um, pretty much, I had the senior center board a week ago Saturday. We sat and the three of us met, but basically it was the budget that came out of that. I attended the MMA conference with Jeff. Uh, and I thought it was a great event. Uh, learned, picked up a lot of things. Learned about what other towns are doing. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, vendors, hundreds of them. Um, you learn about financing opportunities, all sorts of different things. Um, so it was a good event and well worth the time. Awesome. Glad to hear that it was a good event. Anything else from you? No, that's okay. it. Um, before I switch over to the town minister update, or I guess it's part of that, how's the library uh, carpet situation going? Um, I believe it is going well. I don't know. I, I saw Catherine walk in and out this morning, um, and I talked to Lauren, and I assume if there were issues, they would have mentioned yeah, it. So oh, it's supposed enough. to be done tomorrow, right? Are there it's supposed to be done tomorrow, yep. Yeah. Okay. Are, are they yeah. opening tomorrow? Or are they opening on Wednesday? Still, still time right now. I think, I think Wednesday. I don't remember. For some reason, I thought. Twenty fifth. I have in my head, but yeah. For some reason, I thought it said it'd be closed until the twenty third, which I didn't know if that included being closed on the twenty third or. I struggle with context sometimes, so. I think it said it would be closed. Whatever the dates to the twenty third. To the twenty third. Through the twenty third. Through yes. the twenty third. Okay, so they'll be open. So Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. I just wanted yep. to put that in that. Um, so that's it for select board updates. Town minister updates, Jeff. Uh, I just a couple of details um, from the MMA meeting. Uh, the governor is. Introducing a municipal empowerment bill, which sounds boring probably for everybody <laughs> except <laughs> me, but um, you know it, they're going to try and make hybrid meetings permanent. They're going to try and change the procurement rules to make it um, to change the thresholds for the rules. Um, they also mentioned that the governor's budget is going to include a three percent increase for um, local aid. It fully fund the Student Opportunity Act, um, $400 million, two-year authorization for Chapter 90, plus $100 million in supplemental funds, road funds, um, and I, I believe they said $25 million for rural roads. It was $25 million for rural roads or $25 million for rural schools. Um, I think it was roads. I think it was roads. Um, uh, and then we got some information from Maya on the cost of health and dental sh insurance. Um, health insurance, the average increase for Maya members was 6.6%. The range was 2.2 to 9.95. Um, in our fall meeting, our rep thought that we were going to be probably on the higher end. So, um, you know, I think we're going to estimate like six to 8% and then we can have the discussion about the two and a half that, that Jessica mentioned. Um, and then the dental average increased 2.2%. So. That's all I have. All right. Anything else before we call today? I'm good. All right, hearing nothing else at this point, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. Take us out at 8.18. Our next meeting will be uh, next week on the 29th. And don't forget to stop by 23 Plum Tree Road. On Saturday. Saturday. 11, 11 to 1.